I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Thanks for choosing to watch this clip from our Small Town Big Deal YouTube channel. For full episodes, go to our website, smalltownbigdeal.com. Now, enjoy the video. You know, for as long as humans have been around, they've been tempted to travel inside the earth, you know, explore caves. <laughs> Like Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, with its 350 miles of formations, making it the longest cave system in the world. Or Ruby Falls in Tennessee, home to the tallest and deepest underground waterfall open to the public in the U.S. Well, we've traveled to the Cave State, or the Show Me State. Or simply known as Missouri. To one of their most spectacular caves. One that is tied to an infamous outlaw. We're talking about Merrimack Caverns. It recently made USA Today's bucket list of the 60 things you have to do in America before you die. It's located about an hour's drive southwest of St. Louis. It's the largest commercial cave in the state. But before you start your underground adventure, there's a lot going on above ground. Exhilarating zip lines. A mountainside wall to climb, go the pan for, or take to the Merrimack River in one of their canoes, kayaks, inner tubes, or the riverboat. The cave has been owned by the same family since the 1930s. My grandfather always told my grandmother that someday he's going to own a big cave and take thousands of people through it. She thought he was crazy and so did everybody else. <laughs> Turns out Grandpa was crazy like a fox. It's a big attraction with about 150,000 people touring the cave every year. I've been blessed. I've been in caves all over the world. If you were going to make a cave, you couldn't make a cave any better than this one. Inside, Les and his family have built a restaurant, a gift shop, and put up displays showing Merrimack Cavern history. Then you start your cave tour, and it only takes a few steps to make you so glad you came. Ooh, yeah, what's your head? The first stop is called the Ballroom, and at one time, this place is so big they did use it for dances. Before air conditioning, it was the perfect hot summer venue for a dance with its nearly consistent 60-degree internal temperature. In 1720, French explorer Philip Renault was taken to the cave by an Osage Indian guy who told him there were yellow veins running through it. Those veins turned out not to be gold, as he had hoped, but saltpeter, which was used to make gunpowder. So it became a saltpeter mine until the Civil War, when it was shut down by opposing forces. Legend says that among those fighting at the cave were Frank and Jesse James, who were just teenagers at the time. That's how we believe they got knowledge of the cave. After the Civil War, there was a train robbery near Gastel, Missouri in 1874. They took a strong box containing about $12,000 in gold coins. The sheriff tracked them to the mouth of this cave. Three days passed, so they decided to come in the cave. And they found the gang's horses, but no sign of the men who rode them in there. I had no idea where they went. Now, further in the cave, there was a pool of water. James' gang knew about that, so they went through that pool of water. The sheriff came in. They had no idea. They didn't find that until 1941, oh my God. after it had a drought and the water in that pool dropped down, yeah. and they found the strong boxes and found there's a whole lot more cave. The further in we go, we become immersed in this underground world where we want to know more. How big is the cave? They have surveyed the cave back in May of 1995, and they surveyed 26.8 miles. Wow. Are there bats there? Yes, there's about three to 5,000 of them. They're about a quarter mile beyond where the tour goes. We learned the rock formations are made from limestone in some parts of the cave, and the rock forming mineral dolomite in others. Do you know how long it takes something to form? This one here is probably 50,000 years old. Oh my but God. you're talking about a cubic inch per 100 years. Wow, I wish I aged that slowly. An area called Crystal Lake performs like an echo chamber. Small town, big deal. Complete with a light show. So if this cave weren't cool enough already, Stephen shows us this. This is the third largest stalagmite in the world, only behind one in China and one in New Zealand. Then we head to what they call the wine table room. It's named for this table with three legs, a formation created out of the mineral aragonite, and the only one in the world. 
And there are also other aragonite shapes in the room, like these that look like lots of baked bread. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. I'd like to have a little bit of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said this, one, this looks like grapes. So yeah. we've got grapes, bread. Uh, they said that's a wine bottle. We just need cheese. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get some. We'll come back, yeah. Ronnie, watch your head. Our last stop is the theater the right with its dramatic 70-foot-tall rock curtain. Here, visitors are treated to a short film projected directly on to the rock. We're already feeling grateful for special places like this to visit in the U.S., but as we watch the images of our military and our fellow countrymen and women, it reminds us to honor our veterans, respect each other, and appreciate the great country we live in. Thanks for watching this clip from Small Town Big Deal. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Also, click the like button. To see full episodes, go to www.smalltownbigdeal.com.